Here within the diocese, uh, we have a story that's gone around, oh, it's been at least a decade, two decades. A mission group from around the diocese went to Kenya. So all the way from Boise, flying into Nairobi, and on the bus, and out in the wilds. As they got off the bus, the community was gathered around them, singing with joy and dancing, happier than anyone they'd ever seen. Never had this mission group experienced such a warm welcome, full of joy, full of joy. These coming from people who had no water in their village, who had to walk for miles and carry the water. And that was the purpose of the mission trip, to dig a well that would work for them. Here, the first world, rich people were coming, finding something like true joy amidst what we would consider great poverty. Father Jack Cavaji Quayo from Uganda came to camp to spend the summer connected with Bishop Bernie, who taught at the school in, uh, in Uganda. And so um, he was noticing everything about this wonderful camp, and even though it was, as we like to say, rustic, he ended up one evening sitting back and kind of laughing and said, you know, it is so hard here in this country to truly feel the, the joy of Jesus, to truly feel connected to our Lord. Because there are so many things that are in the way. We're distracted time and again by the wealth that surrounds us. We don't have time, we don't have attention to focus on the experience of Jesus with us. So here we are in this strange, strange time of the virus, and we're not feeling happy about it. Where is the joy that we're supposed to feel while still living in this first world? Now, that's not to say that bad things aren't happening. Some of us without jobs worry about where will the dinner come from? This month, in one of the saddest witnesses of our culture, People will be evicted from their homes. People who have been living in an apartment for some time and regularly paying their rent. So the challenges are immense. I don't want to say that they're not. We're not feeling at home when we're at home, stuck at home imprisoned in our home. Remember the old saying, just feel right at home. This, this great, smooth, running machine of our economy has run out of gas. And so, in one sense, we are at one with the whole world in this season. But again, we don't seem to be very happy about it. Show us the way, blind man cries. Show us the way, Jesus. In our gospel lesson, the, the disciples were also feeling lost and abandoned. Jesus has been preaching at them for some time as he has approached Jerusalem, and now he's sitting with them after the, the supper, and he's explaining to them what's coming up. He's trying to prepare them for the next phase of their life. And they're not happy about that. Everything that they've followed for three years anyway, everything's about to be changed. But how does he begin today's passage? 
Do not let your hearts be troubled. Don't worry. Things will change. Don't be troubled. Why? There's a place for you. There's a dwelling place, an abiding place. In the King James, these are the mansions. Mansions that Jesus is preparing for them. The disciples will have a new home. But of course, Thomas, how to get there? We don't know the way. And Jesus answers, I'm the way. I'm the way. To go to the Father, your ultimate abiding place, we follow Jesus. And then Philip, he wants to know the details. Show us the Father. Give us a sign. That cry time and again. Give us a sign. Well, Jesus says, I have been here all this time, and still you do not see the Father through me? So what more could Jesus do? It's already been shown. So if the disciples are at a loss and unsure, where does that leave us today? Jesus' Ascension Day will be celebrated this Thursday, Jesus has risen from the grave and will be celebrating his rising from the earth to be with the Father. So again, what does that mean with, for us today? From that far distance in time and space, how do we follow Jesus to our abiding place? Well, Jesus, truth, and life are the next things that he mentions. The truth and life of Jesus shown to us in Scripture, the stories of his deeds and teachings are there for us to study, to digest, to try to understand, and most of all, to try to follow. We can indeed know what God calls us to do and be, because Jesus has shown us. Our ultimate purpose has been revealed in Jesus' life. So, who really is Jesus? What springs to your mind? Of course, you'll have many things. We think, oh, we know Jesus. But Jesus is saying he is the way. He is the way to eternal life. Well, it's Mother's Day. How do we know our mom? How do we know her inner thoughts and feelings, her desires and wishes and motivations? Well, mom has brought us up. Mom said to us many times, do not let your hearts be troubled. So think of the selfless acts that parents must take on to bring up their children. It's these kinds of selfless giving that Jesus is talking about. And we incorporate that. In three weeks, we'll celebrate the coming of the Holy Spirit. We celebrate that guide within our hearts to help us follow Jesus. We are to live so that our doing and being will be works and lives that Jesus calls us to act and do. He says we're going to do greater things than the disciples saw in Jesus' time on earth. So once again, the call, the call is to give up ourselves. Remember the prayer from morning prayer. By giving up ourselves to thy service. And that word is split. It isn't just, oh, I'm going to give up myself and I'm going to go feed people and provide good things for people. Further than that, we give up our selfhood. We give up our focus on us. We think about God's kingdom, number one. And by giving up ourselves, we follow Jesus' way. 
So in this time of true need, it's the giving and receiving that bring us close to the kingdom. We all have a mission now. And that mission isn't just to do good deeds. Yes, do them. Provide food at the food banks. Support those who need support. But the ultimate is to provide joy in a time where we tend to feel despair. Those good things that we do, do with joy. Those things that we think we don't have resources for, all of us, are able, if we do, if we will, to share the joy of Jesus' example. So let the challenges of today open our eyes to the community that we're part of. We live in community, it's not just ourselves that we focus on, it's our community. And let us bring joy to that community. Our joy, truly, is the knowledge of giving and receiving what is truly important. That is, the way to the Father. The way to the Father through the love of God. All this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.